Hey, how's it going? This is the Argonaut. We are here again in another painting video where we will be painting a Gondorian soldier, a veteran of Osgiliath, which I will be using for a thumbnail for a future series. A uh, <laughs> little minor spoiler for some fun stuff I've been cooking up with some other uh, YouTubers, uh, and uh, I will be playing as Gondor. So, uh, for, for whatever that is, hmm, definitely not a hot seat campaign. Uh, <laughs> We'll see. Stay tuned, and uh, yeah, keep an eye out for new stuff coming in. But in the meantime, I needed to make a thumbnail, uh, so I thought it would be a great time to do another little art piece and um, have another little video, too, showing my painting process. So what is going on so far? Uh, well, I already kind of threw together the baseline work for the figure, uh, using myself holding a shovel as reference. Uh, my lovely wife took it of me outside. Uh, so <laughs> always got to have reference. That's my number one thing as far as uh, my painting goes. Okay, so uh, right now I'm just kind of blocking in the clothing. I'm sort of going for, you can see my reference over on the over on the side of the canvas there. Uh, you know, lots of pictures of Faramir and, and Gondorian, uh, or Ithilian rangers, I, I should say. So I'm kind of looking more towards Faramir as a main inspiration but um, gonna do a few little differences some different colors and, and also I'm gonna do some chain mail too so uh, anyways we are trucking along here just kind of blocking in the gauntlets I'm, I'm just kind of trying to design the clothing as best I can first uh, roughly and then we're gonna go ahead and do finer detail work and then move on towards actual painting Alrighty, so we have blocked in all of the, or sorry, uh, we have we have done all the line work for the clothing and uh, the armor, etc. And now we're moving in, and I figured, you know, it kind of makes sense to uh, <laughs> to give my little avatar here uh, long hair like Faramir. Uh, you know, pretty much every single dude, it seems, uh, every every man of Gond, every dude of Gondor has nice long flowing locks. And uh, fun fact, I did actually have hair down to my shoulders about two years ago. Doesn't, didn't look quite as nice as, as Photomir's. Uh, it was quite a bit curlier and quite a bit thicker. But uh, yeah, I got a little sick of it and I just, I just had to cut it. But I can at least relive that moment in my life by drawing long luscious locks here. So we're chipping away there and uh, yes, I will catch up with you. Using Faramir here as inspiration, I am continuing to chip away at the hair, trying to get more detail done now. Uh, it's kind of these alternating S-shaped lines, uh, I find kind of give a sort of realistic look to hair uh, when you're when you're drawing it out. So, you know, I, I kind of have a mix between kind of trying to be more realistic and a little cartoony at the same time. Uh, that's that's just a process I, I enjoy, a, a, a nice balance between suggesting something and then really trying to represent it literally. So that's kind of what I'm doing with the hair here. And we have moved on to the, uh, I guess you would say, I don't know, leather, uh, leather tunic kind of thing. <laughs> and we needed, of course, the white tree. So I grabbed an image of it online and am kind of positioning it into place using the warp tool. I'm always using the warp tool uh, at all times to mess around with my line work to position how I want. And what I'm doing here is I put it in position, but it's gonna look weird if I don't draw it myself. So I'm tracing over it, uh, which is going to help incorporate it more into the image so it won't stand out so much as looking strange. I'm looking like too fine of, uh, too fine of line work compared to the rest of the line work of the image. So uh, here, you know, you can see I just rotated the canvas. I'm also always rotating the canvas, not always, but you know, often in order to, um, you know, get a, a smoother line. I find I, I draw smoother if I'm going left to right than right to left because I'm uh, right-handed. So if I rotate the canvas, that can help me uh, be a little more accurate with my line work. So here I'm just throwing in some more details, trying to get the, the leather a little more worn looking, uh, a little more beat up, etc. Uh, you know, he's he's been through some battles, this this veteran of Osgiliath. He has some pretty nice nice armor, nothing too beat up, nothing too destroyed and, and you know, hanging on by threads. Uh, you know, I'm thinking probably some sort of noble or something, but 
<laughs> Anyways, uh, here we're incorporating the body line work with the clothing line work. I'm just getting rid of all the excess line work. And we have merged down the uh, all the lines and ready to kind of get some finer detail worked out. And then move on to the chain mail. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right now getting some more detail done, little stitches, etc. And I'll catch up with you. Alrighty, so pretty much getting done with the line work. Uh, just a little bit left on the lower half, and then also the chainmail. So here's where we get into the chainmail. I try a few different things. I have a chainmail brush, uh, but I've, I, it's just sort of for quick little tiny spots. And uh, I, I did make it myself, and it, it's okay, it's not great, but uh, it's not really good for a large area of chainmail. So I was trying really hard to kind of find a shortcut, and in the end, I decide that it's I'm not really going to find a shortcut. It's, it's just going to look best if I kind of just do it by hand and put in the work. So right now what I'm doing is I use my chainmail brush just to get an idea... Um, just sort of put down a framework for what I want it to look like, and then I'm going to draw over it. So uh, here I've made this pattern, and now I'm going to warp it to the arm, because obviously, you know, the arm is a 3D object, so the chain, I don't know, ch chain, the male links, I guess, the male links, yeah, <laughs> are going to be closer together the further the closer they are to the edge of the arm, visually, uh, just because it wraps around, you know. If I explain that well, I'm not sure, but you can see what I'm doing there is it's it's going to be basically a narrower pattern <laughs> uh, the closer it gets to the edge of the arm. So here we are done with all of the line work. You can see finished up the bottom half as well. Just got a little pattern on uh, the, you know, tabard uh, tunic or whatever, you know, I don't really know terms, but <laughs> we do need to do a sword now. So a nice uh, little hand and a half sword ready for combat. Uh, raising it valiantly. It's a very, you know, classic kind of heroic pose. <laughs> so I figured, hey, we're going to be Gondor. We need to be heroic. And I want to represent them heroically. So uh, here, just kind of mapping things out. I wanted it to be a pretty simple blade. Nothing too schnazzy, nothing too fantasy-esque. So I found a good reference there. And just chipping away at it. Getting the lines in. I was pretty happy with... Uh, how it came out, and yeah, I'm pretty happy with the line work in general here. I had a lot of fun with it. I ended up spending a lot more time on it than I thought I would, uh, but you know, sometimes you just get lost in it, and you're just having too much fun. So, the sword almost done here now. Skipped ahead a little bit, uh, you know, pretty simple process, just some straight lines and then angling them appropriately. So, uh, what I did there is I actually increased the size of the canvas because I realized the sword was too small and he was a little too large for the canvas size, so uh, that's an, another little thing I do. I'm constantly changing the size of the canvas. But yes, we are done with the line work and ready to move on now. Uh, you can see he's raring and ready to go, and we are ready to start painting. So first step I like to do when I'm painting is I block in uh, the entire figure, uh, with a, just a solid color, and then what I can do from there is I will be able to select uh, chunks of that color. Basically, I'll block everything in with one color first, and then I go in and block in, you know, say, the cloak with one color, and then the skin with a different color, and that way I can go in and select it, and then it creates these little borders of which I can't um, draw out of so you can see kind of what's happening there. There's little like lines around the figure uh, It's sort of like a, a boundary of which I cannot paint out of so uh, I'm just going through right now blocking in all the colors and I'll catch up with you once I'm done with the rest of them and There we have it. Oh, by the way, this is times eight speed <laughs> uh, And voila, so we are done with blocking in all the colors and who's that handsome devil? Up at the left there. Oh yeah, that's the Argonaut. Uh, I, of course, need reference, and uh, what better reference than my own party face, huh? Uh, okay, so we are painting away now. That was the sort of fun, sort of stressful part for me. I think line work, I, I just love doing line work and sketching and stuff like that, so I'm always a little bit stressed when I have to go paint. But, um, you know, there's, there's kind of a few ways you can go about it, but what I like to do is I really just kind of 
take a one section at a time. Like I'm just doing the face right now. And yeah, you know, maybe you could have the, the painting have a bit more of an incorporated feel if you're just painting everything, uh, you know, all together and not bordering things off like I'm doing in little sections. But I don't know. That's just the way I like to do it. And I've, I've been enjoying that method for a while. So maybe I'll try some new things out in the future. But Anyways, we are uh, chipping away, and I got in some base shadows first, and I had a little tester uh, with, you know, light and dark with the mouth there with some highlights. And right now, I'm giving myself clown makeup. No, it's not clown makeup. Uh, but basically what it is is there's sort of these colored zones of your face. Uh, it's usually kind of where – I don't really know how to describe it very well. But, like, you know, you have a lot more um, kind of – tints of red and stuff around your cheeks and your nose and a little bit on your mouth and especially for men uh, usually it's a little more kind of bluish hues in a way down towards the jaw and chin etc so uh, I'm painting over them with flesh tones but it gives a nice kind of depth to the face so it's not just looking like I painted everything just some base flesh tones uh, so uh, the face is basically done here, and what I decided to do is, well, you know, if if he's a, a warrior, a, a man in the in the in you know, <laughs> he's been in battle for a long time, he probably doesn't have that much time to shave. So I figured I'd throw in some stubble there uh, with a nice little hairbrush uh, that I didn't make myself. I, I forget where I got it, but um, yeah, it's a nice little little touch there, gives a little extra detail. So we're moving on to the golden locks there. I'm just quickly chipping away at the hair. Should go pretty quickly. Uh, you know, most of the work was done with the line work. So, all right, we are getting close here, folks. Uh, we are moving on towards the other, other items here, the cape. And uh, yeah, just blocking in some highlights, some low lights, kind of thinking where the light would be hitting the figure. Uh, you know, I, I don't have perfectly accurate uh, you know, uh, reference, but I'm, I'm doing the best I can with images that I have. But, uh, yeah, here we're just, uh, messing around with some layer styles and, uh, yeah, we're going to move right along to the chain mail. So the most time consuming event here, <laughs> but in the end, I am happy with how it comes out. So sometimes you just got to put in the work. First thing I do here is I'm going to just block in a sort of base light and dark, and then move from there. So I get kind of a mid-tone and start working on the links first with that. And just doing it all by hand. <laughs> just chipping away. And uh, I'm going to then add in some more highlights, some brighter highlights, etc. So we skipped ahead there, obviously. You can see this is closer to the final product. I'm going to increase my highlights a little bit more just to make them a little brighter, like they're really catching the light. And voila, pretty happy with how that ended up coming out. Getting a little light on the bottom end there. Uh, and voila, so going to skip ahead. I've done the other bits of chain mail. And we are moved on to the tunic thing. <laughs> Leather armor, maybe we'll just say that. <laughs> All right, so uh, yeah, the rest of the painting is pretty much all just going to be a similar material to this, sort of leather-ish, cloth-ish material. So I'm just blocking in highlights and lowlights, and then I grab a really soft brush, and like an, almost an airbrush, and I'm going to be able to finish the rest of it off, because actually the leather is pretty smooth looking uh, with its highlights and its shadows. So the last little touch I like to do is I do have a leather texture here, texture file, and I throw on a different blending style. I think I probably end up doing overlay. Uh, and all it does is it gives it a little bit of texture once you look a little closer at it. So it doesn't affect things too much, but uh, it's just a nice little, little touch there. And voila. So I went and finished off the rest of the image. Uh, you can see I did uh, change the line work on the you know, uh, bottom half of them a little bit, just fixing the legs up a little bit and some few, a few things I didn't really like. But in the end, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I had a lot of fun doing this painting, and I'm really excited about the series, and I hope you are too. Uh, I know I'm being a little ambiguous with it, but, you know, it keeps it interesting, right? Uh, so that should be... Look, look for it on the horizon, probably about uh, maybe... 
maybe about two to three weeks out. So, uh, but yeah, so thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't subscribed yet, really appreciate it. If you hit that subscribe button. Let me know what you think of these painting videos. You know, it's something a little different. Uh, and I, I do enjoy doing them. They are obviously more time consuming than my typical videos, but uh, you know, it, it's a, it's a fun, fun little change of pace, I think. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.